It's time for the ESPN College Football Week 8 Pick'em. Let's not waste time. Let's get to this thing. All right, you guys know what's up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, this is Winning Cures Everything. We only talk college football here. Of course, subscribe to the podcast as well as the YouTube channel and hit that like button. That would certainly help me out. Uh, of course, don't forget, I also host the college football show for BetUS TV. So the BetUS college football show, you can find a link down in the description for that thing. And uh, along with that, follow me on the socials. At GaryWCE is where you can find me. You can see me on X over there. Of course, uh, all of these stat previews that you're going to see here, you can get at bettingcfb.com. You can be a member over there, 5 bucks a month, 50 bucks for the year. Uh, we do a bunch of stuff in the offseason as well, bonus content, etc. So hopefully you will do that as well. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. And so far on the season, 34 and 26. Apparently, we did not make picks in week two. I don't know how that happened. And I don't know what the record was that week, but but we are 34 and 26. We're in the 75th percentile on the ESPN thing. And there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that are playing this. So we're doing okay. We should be better. But regardless, let's, uh, let's go ahead and fire into game number one. And that would be Virginia at Clemson. And the number here is Clemson minus 21 and a half. Uh, at the ESPN site. Remember, these set in on the opening number. So let's go ahead and look at what we've got on the sheet. My line is Clemson minus 22. So it's right around that 21 and a half. My line over the last four weeks is Clemson minus 27. Now that is uh, a pretty significant advantage there. Here's here's the issue. I don't think that Dabo is going to run up the score on... Uh, Tony Elliott, obviously the Virginia coach, former offensive coordinator for Clemson. So that is something to pay attention to for these. Uh, Clemson next week has got... Da, 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 they've got a bye week next week. And then they've got Louisville at Virginia Tech at Pitt. Like this is the, the bulk of their schedule coming. I don't think that they are going to run this thing up. I think Virginia is going to... Uh, both of them like to run a lot of plays. I'll say that uh, number fifty-five and number twenty in plays per game. I, I just get this feeling that this will be a little bit tighter. Maybe I'm crazy. I mean, Virginia is pretty good. They're four and two on the season, uh, four and one against the spread. Like one of them is a push, obviously, but uh, but both teams cover pretty well. My numbers like Clemson. I'm going to go against it because Clemson has been rolling everybody over three touchdowns. I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to take Virginia plus 21 and a half. Uh, I think Clemson is ready to get to that bye week. I think that Dabo still likes Tony Elliott. So that is the way that we will go on this one. East Carolina goes to Army. And Army right now a 17 and a half point favorite at ESPN, uh, at least for the Pick'em Contest. 84% of people have picked Army. Now, the number has dropped to like 15 and a half now at the different sports books. So let's go ahead and bring up the number and see what we're looking at. And yeah, you can obviously see why uh, people have, have been, uh, have been doing that. Um, Army is really good running the ball. Army hadn't really played anybody. They're number 133 out of 134 teams in current strength of schedule. That is kind of ridiculous. They're number two in PPA per rush. The reason why I think people are in on East Carolina this week is East Carolina is coming off of a bye. And if you look at the numbers, East Carolina is number 14 in predicted points added allowed per rush, number 12 in rushing success rate allowed. And that is even though 51%, well, 51.68% of the time, their defense is having to defend the run. Now, none of the teams that they've played are able to do exactly what Army has done. But you look at these numbers, and, I mean, good gracious, East Carolina gave up like 300-plus yards to Charlotte last week. Liberty was able to run on them quite a bit. At some point, it's got to come down to earth for Army, right? I mean, do they just cash week in and week out? Uh, this offense for East Carolina is atrocious. They benched Jake Garcia. 
uh, can they figure out the turnover problem? Because they are number 134 in the country in giveaways per game. I mean, it is just abysmal. Uh, and yet, East Carolina, 3-3, three and three, straight up and against the spread. Army has covered every single game. I Here's the problem. Army likes to go slow, but East Carolina likes to go really fast. And if they aren't scoring, that's a problem. Because then you're just giving the ball right back to Army, and they can go down. They are... Uh, they are great at finishing drives. Number 19 in points per scoring opportunity. Uh, as far as red zone, offensive red zone conversion percentage, they're number nine. They are number 36 in red zone appearances per game, number three in touchdown rate. 88% of the time that they get into the red zone, they score a touchdown. Army is efficient. And this this defense, for East you know what? I was going to go, he's gonna, I, I think Army is it. I think they're gonna. I think this is another spot for them. So even though 84 percent of the people are on Army, I'm just gonna take them again. Look, they're at home. I feel pretty good about this. I I think I think Army's a good football team. I spent too long on that. Next game up, Notre Dame goes to Georgia Tech. This one's gonna be inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium, so it's uh, more of a neutral site, I guess you could say. There's gonna be a lot of Notre Dame fans here. Uh, the number that they've got here on the ESPN Pick'em is Notre Dame minus eight and a half. Well, since this line was set, the number got steamed, and Notre Dame was out to an 11 and a half point favorite. And we have found out that Haynes King, there's a possibility he may not play, or if he does, he's not going to be 100%. So this thing is probably going to go even higher. So let's take a look at what the numbers got. I got Notre Dame by two touchdowns. And if you look based on the last four weeks of data, I've got Notre Dame by 31. Notre Dame has been playing incredibly efficient football. Um, they're number eight in PPA margin. They are number 69 in offensive success rate, but number 21 in defensive success rate. So it kind of switches back and forth. It, the problem for Georgia Tech is that Haynes King is worth a lot to this team. I mean, he makes that whole engine run for uh, the coordinator, uh, Buster Faulkner. I, like, this is this is a pretty easy one, Right. Like I, this is this seems fairly simple. Uh, let's go ahead and swap it over. Let's take Notre Dame minus the eight and a half. I think that's the uh, the easiest way for us to do this. All right, right quick. Let me tell you how you can save some money. And I know that everybody's interested in doing that, especially with the way that the economy is going right now. I know it's an election year and everything else, but if you are going to go to a show or going to go to a uh, uh, football game some kind of concert, whatever it is, go to TicketSmarter.com. Do yourself that favor. Use the promo codes. WCE10, it's going to get you 10 bucks off an order of $100 or more. WCE20, that's WCE20, that's going to get you 20 bucks off an order of $300 or more. You want to go out and see uh, Alabama and Auburn later on. Alabama, LSU. Alabama, Tennessee is this weekend. You want to go see Nebraska, Indiana this weekend? It, it costs a lot of money to get into these games. It's a bunch of money. If you're wanting to go to the national championship, the playoffs, it's going to cost some money. And you can save money every single time that you go to the website. Ticketsmarter.com. It's not a one-time sign-up bonus thing. All you got to do is enter the promo code WCE10 or WCE20. It's going to save you 10 bucks off an order of $100 or more or 20 bucks off an order of $300 or more. Do yourself the favor. Think smarter with Ticket Smarter. Now, also... Of course, like the video if you hadn't done that. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, we still got a few games to go through, but uh, make sure that you are checking out bettingcfb.com. If you like these stat previews that I've got, I post them up there uh, at the beginning of each and every week. So go and sign up bettingcfb.com. All right, we carry on. Let's see what we got here. Charlotte heads to Navy, and Charlotte absolutely beat the brakes off of East Carolina. Uh, last week, a couple weeks ago. Now they're coming in off of a bye. This team is an enigma wrapped in a whatever it is. I mean, it's just a strange team. But Navy favored by 17 and a half. They are fantastic. 88% of people have picked Navy thus far. I've got Navy by 24. But if you look based on the last four weeks of data, I got Navy by 21. Um, Navy's offense is really good. I mean, this is Navy and army are like the exact same right now. Insanely efficient on offense. Defense is good enough. 
And that's the deal. Charlotte's numbers, it, it, none of it makes sense. And yet they are three and three. Like I, they, they are just as likely to get blown out as they are to blow somebody else out. I can't figure the Charlotte team out. Um, but how can you go against the service academies? I would love for one of you to tell me that. The numbers like Navy, I think it's easy enough for us to go back over and just take Navy and just trust in the process. We, uh, we respect our troops around here. That is what we're going to do. So we will continue on. Next on the board, James Madison goes to Georgia Southern. This line is actually hovering between 9.5 and, and 10 elsewhere. So uh, right now it's 10.5 at ESPN, and 73% of people have taken James Madison. So let's take a look. Let's see what we've got as far as my number. And my number likes James Madison by 11 and a half. So over the last four weeks, I mean, good gracious, it likes James Madison by 24 points. Uh, the problem is, like Georgia Southern, I'm very curious about what this team is with a different quarterback because against Marshall, they were down 23 to three with six minutes left in the game and found a way to score three touchdowns at the end of the game with a backup quarterback. Now, part of that was momentum. Part of it was luck. Part of it was whatever, but something that is not luck is James Madison, number one in the country in defensive success rate. Now, granted they've played the number one twenty nine schedule while Georgia Southern has played the number 34 but man, like I I wait in some of the opponent adjustments, and it still likes James Madison. So like, there's a lot of green on James Madison's side. <laughs> Neither team turns the ball over very much. James Madison is uh, pretty aggressive, so they're going to have more penalties um, than Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern number 44 in penalties per game. Um, they're number. 46 in penalty yards per game at 48. Uh, yeah, it's, it seems like there's a big difference. There's really not. James Madison, number 81 in penalty yards per game, but they're at 58. So it's only 10 yards difference between the two. Um, yeah, Georgia Southern, they, they can't stop anybody on defense. Like, it's just not good at all. You look at points per scoring opportunity, number 89, they're giving up four points per scoring opportunity. That's a trip inside the opponent 40-yard line. Uh, number 37 for James Madison, they're scoring 4.36. So that number should actually go up for them in this game. Gosh, I don't like taking all these favorites, uh, especially on the road. But we uh, we trust the process. We trust the process around here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do it. We'll take James Madison at minus 10.5. Did it actually take? There we go. All right, so it took. All right, we carry on. We're back in the SEC. Ball State goes to Nashville to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. And this one's kind of been all over the place. Uh, Vandy, a 26.5-point favorite here at ESPN. And why don't we just uh, take a look at what we got here. My number likes Vandy by 25. My number over the last four weeks likes Vandy minus... Da, da, da. Is that 18? Yep, minus 18 and a half. Um, this is, Vanderbilt has got Texas next week. This is a sandwich spot, if I've ever seen one. The problem is that Diego Pavia and that bunch don't really have an off switch. They just, they just keep going. I saw this with them at New Mexico State last year. There is no letdown. There is no sandwich. There is no whatever. They just continue to roll. But let me tell you why I am going to go with Ball State. And the reason for that is because I'm going to bet on Diego every time he's a double-digit underdog. What I'm not going to do is ever bet on this Vanderbilt team when they are a favorite, ever again. I did that against Georgia State, and they lost the game outright. So the, all of the numbers here would make you believe that they should absolutely house Ball State. And they might house them. But when you look at the plays per game, they are going to go slow, slow, slow. I think Ball State will probably do the same thing, even though on the season they're number 32 in offensive plays per game. The offense for Ball State is okay. 
the Vanderbilt defense is not great, uh, but this is certainly the kind of spot where Ball State would put up a few points. Vanderbilt will run some clock. 26 and a half feels like a touch too much. Um, we are going to go with Ball State on this one, plus 26 and a half. All right, right quick. Let me tell you about Go Sleeves. GoSleeves.com. It's the best kinesiology sleeves that are on the market. They are fantastic. Uh, you put them on your knees, you put them on your elbows, whatever, wherever you have a little bit of joint pain, etc. They are the best thing that you could find. Go check them out. GoSleeves.com slash WCE. You're going to get 15% off when you go and use that promo code. If you just go to GoSleeves.com and put in WCE, that's also going to save you the money. But... You can check it out, ghostleaves.com slash WCE. All right, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, and, uh, you know, bettingcfb.com is where you can find all of these different uh, stat projections and whatnot. That's, uh, that's the best way to find them. All right, carrying on. Georgia is going to Texas. Texas is a three-and-a-half-point home favorite. It's in Austin. It's at night. It is a huge, I'm talking massive, massive game but let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, get ready to laugh, okay? I, because I did when I saw the projection come out. I mean, it's just absurd. I've got Texas favored by 18 and a half points. And it's even worse when you look over the last four weeks because I have Texas by 25 points. Texas has broken my model. I, I don't know what to do with it. It's not like Georgia is that bad. Texas is number six in ESPN strength of record. Georgia is number seven. And yet, I've got Texas power rated at number one. I've got Georgia power rated at number 10. Make this make sense to me. It's three and a half. I want to take Georgia. I really do. But the numbers speak to me. Georgia is number 24 in PPA margin. Texas is number two. PPA, by the way, is predicted points added. It's uh, an analytic tool that basically assigns a point value to every play in a ball game. Uh, the difference with everybody else's and mine is that all of mine has garbage time taken out. So that's why these numbers are a little bit different than everybody else's. Um, Georgia is number 24 in offensive success rate, number 33 in defensive success rate allowed. Texas is number 10 and number 13. Now, Georgia has certainly played a tougher strength of schedule, right? Texas is number 82 in their current strength of schedule. Georgia is number seven. But they have played similar rosters. I think we can say that. And Texas has just looked significantly better. Uh, this Texas defense is lights out. They Georgia has not been good as far as third downs go. Uh, they've been a lot better on fourth down. However, you know, Texas has been pretty good at both of those as well. <laughs> I'm uh I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna trust the numbers. Trust the process, they say. So I will take Texas minus the three and a half. It feels weird. But that's what we're gonna do. And if that ends up happening, Georgia is gonna have two losses by the middle of October. This football season is not quite what we bargained for, is it? UCF goes to Iowa State right now. Iowa State, a 13.5 point favorite here at ESPN. And this is another team that I can't quite figure out. UCF just does not make a whole lot of sense to me. And we'll look at the numbers. My numbers like Iowa State, minus 19.37. If you look over the past four weeks, my numbers like Iowa State by 37. 37 points. Like UCF got kind of lucky that the Cincinnati game wasn't worse because Brendan Sorsby kept throwing uh, turning the football over. This UCF defense can't stop the pass. Iowa State is pretty good at it, even though they don't do it much. They only throw the ball 44% of the time. Um, I'm, I'm interested in what UCF does on offense and whether or not Iowa State can stop it. Iowa State, number 36 in PPA allowed per rush. Uh, they are number 63 in rushing success rate allowed. 
I think that UCF is going to be able to run the ball. But in order for them to run the ball and not have eight guys at the line of scrimmage, K.J. Jefferson has to do something throwing the football. He's number 111 in PPA per pass, uh, and yet they're number 25 in passing success rate. They're number 91 in interceptions thrown per pass. Iowa State's defense is number three. What that Iowa State defense coordinator does on defense, uh, John Heacock, it is some of the crazy stuff, and you'll see it in the second half. I promise you. It's some of the crazy stuff you will ever see, and he's crazy like a fox. It always ends up working. Uh, and yet, this still feels like a bit much. I mean, it, it it feels like a favorites weekend for some reason. Uh, you see 82% of the people have picked Iowa State. And yet, my numbers say to do that exactly. So, UCF has got uh, somebody coming into town next week. They got BYU coming to town next week. So... This is a, a tricky one. Again, we'll trust the numbers. Uh, it feels odd to have this many favorites selected, but how do you bet against some of these teams? I mean, it's just almost impossible. All right, one more quick reminder. Of course, check out the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Of course, click the link in the description for that. And uh, make sure and check out bettingcfb.com. If you like these stat projections, you can get them over there along with a bunch of other bonus stuff that I put out on a weekly basis. Uh, and it's a fun community. I've been surprised at the growth this year. You guys are fantastic. Uh, I have I have a good time. I have a good time with all of that for sure. All right, carrying on, we move to our next game. We've only got two left here. North Texas goes to Memphis this Saturday night. And the current line on ESPN, at least on the Pick'em page, is Memphis minus nine and a half. So let's take a look at these numbers. And my number likes Memphis by close to five and a half points. And over the last four weeks, it likes North Texas by almost five points. North Texas has been absolutely rolling. Uh, their offense is, I mean, really, really good. And they run a lot of plays. That's a Eric Morris offense. That's exactly what they do. So uh, they, they run the second most offensive drives per game, uh, which means they also give up a lot of defensive drives, which could be good for Memphis. Memphis has not been as good throwing the football this year, number 91 in predicted points added per pass, uh, but they're throwing the ball 57% of the time. It just passing success rate is, is down. They're number 95 in that, number 87 in passing explosiveness, but they can't run the ball. Right, Mario at running back, uh, 23 in PPA per rush, number 44 rushing success rate, they're number 17 in rushing explosiveness. The North Texas defense is not terrible, but also not good either, so Memphis is going to be able to put up points here. On the other side, the Memphis defense, surprisingly fairly decent, but can they slow down what North Texas is doing on offense? Uh, I think that North Texas is going to be able to score. I think Memphis is going to be able to score. The total on this thing is 66 and a half, or at least it was. Um, I, I'm i going to go with North Texas. I'm going to trust this number here uh, because I think North Texas can fire away. I mean, this was a close ball game last year. We'll go back over to the Pick'em page. We will take North Texas. Only 43% of people have taken them in that spot. Last game of the day, we've got SMU heading to Stanford, and SMU is a 15.5-point favorite on this. 76% of the people have taken SMU, which means I would like to lean Stanford, but they didn't look good against Notre Dame last week. Now, I don't expect a whole lot of people to look good against Notre Dame, but good gracious, that was rough. Uh, so now Stanford has to travel all the way back over to Palo Alto, and SMU, uh, I believe, coming off of a bye week, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that is not what you want to see if you are Stanford, right? Yes, coming off of a bye. Yeah. I mean, this is... It, we're going to have to go with the favorite again, aren't we? Uh, you see all this red on the Stanford side? They're number 123 in predicted points added margin. SMU is number 20. You have over 100 difference. 100 rankings difference between the two, between number 20 and 123. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. I like what Troy Taylor's doing, but 
man, it is going to take some time to build this thing up into a competent roster. So, Rhett Lashley and company, uh, I like Scott Simons, their defensive coordinator. Um, I mean, this is, look at that. Number 105 against number 16 in five factors plus talent rank. It is, one team is really efficient and the other is not, to say the least. Uh, so, let's make it easy. Let's let's take SMU minus 15 and a half. I don't like it uh, over that number, but... Uh, SMU's coming off of bye. I think they're going to be they're going to be ready to rock and roll uh, on that one. All right, our tiebreaker here is how many total points will be scored in Georgia versus Texas. My projection had sixty two points, so that's what we will put in here. So all these picks have now been auto saved. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, and do our recap right quick, and I'll write the time down on that. But here's our recap, uh, very quickly, all the way back to the top. We're going to take Virginia plus 21.5, Army minus 17.5, Notre Dame minus 8.5, Navy minus 17.5, James Madison minus 10.5, Ball State plus 26.5, Texas minus 3.5, Iowa State minus 13.5, sorry, minus 13 and a half. Boy, 113 would be nuts, uh, North Texas plus 9.5, SMU minus 15.5, and 62 total points in Georgia versus Texas. Oh, good gracious. Um, do me a favor, of course, subscribe here on the YouTube channel and uh, make sure that you leave some comments. I want to know your picks on these games. Am I crazy for some of these picks? Tell me what you think. Give me some reasons to back it up. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, Bet U.S. College Football Show, of course, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern. Third Dog Thursday is here on Thursdays. Uh, of course, I give out my 20 off-the-radar picks here on the channel on Wednesday evenings and bettingcfb.com. So there you go. Go sleeves. Ticket smarter. We got it all in there in less than 30 minutes. You guys are fantastic. Uh, with that said, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.